Welcome back to Every Church of Peace Church. Is that uh, this is the program that uh, Attorney Don Edwards has made uh, for our community, created for our community, and has been on such a long time. And we're most fortunate that he did that. We're most fortunate that week after week we can talk about this important issue of Every Church of Peace Church. And we want to continue a dialogue that was started last week uh, with the man, uh, the Reverend Emmanuel Charles McCarthy, uh, who wrote in a book which you can buy, uh, All Things Flee Thee, For Thou Fleest Me. Uh, now, a cry to the churches and their leaders to stop running from the nonviolent Jesus and his nonviolent ways. Uh, that is a cry to the whole world as well as to us individually. It's a cry to all the institutions of the culture. And I suppose that's where we are as Christians in this culture or people who are concerned about justice and truth and love and who at their deepest desire peace regardless of who they've connected it to or what or what kind of religion they've connected it to, would desire for these things to happen uh, for the fulfillment of themselves and the world around them, who understand uh, uh, how destructive uh, to our very souls as well as to the material around us that war is and that peace cannot come until we get rid of poverty. Well, let's put it the other way, until we have truth and justice and love. That will produce the peace that we need the most. And we were just uh, talking before uh, about that very thing. What do we do as individuals? What do we demand of our institutions? But How do we see the church itself? You know, you know, C.T., that uh, Archbishop Don Helder Camara, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, who was the Archbishop of Recife, Brazil, mm -hmm. now dead, just mm -hmm. died not too long ago, uh, Recife was one of the poorest areas in Brazil. I mean, right. they're, they're poor, just yeah. uh, with all that goes with that. That's right. There's nothing glorious in poverty. No, there isn't. Nothing. And for for a good part of his life, he did feed the poor. I mean, he, he had bread lines and he had, you know, so forth and so on, try to get clothes and try to get medicine. But it's, at one point in his life, all of a sudden, instead of just feeding the poor, he began to publicly ask the question, why are the poor poor? That's the thing. So, when he did that, he was no longer a saint. He was a communist. <laughs> now, in the old Cold War days, huh, when anyone would ask, why are the poor poor? Yeah. When anyone would suggest that there is a maldistribution of goods and services and wealth and everything in the society and that this is humanly created, they'd call him a communist and that would end the discussion. Today, what I noticed on, on the television, they can't use communist anymore. So what they say is, you're trying to start class warfare. Uh-huh. That's class interesting. Class warfare. That's interesting. Okay? And my answer to that is, I, I and others are not trying to start class warfare. Class warfare has already been started by mm -hmm. the rich. That's exactly right. and always has been. If this were poor, there would not be poverty. There would not be oppression unless there was first the violence brought down upon people that impoverishes them, that oppresses them. Precisely right. And so, uh, Saint, uh, it, it seems to me that one of the things that we are confronted with here is that, is that uh, we have a situation whereby our gospel is very, very clear. Jesus is very, very clear. How clear can you make it that when you say the last judgment, the very last judgment that people are going to face is not dependent upon whether you went to church on Sunday or not. There we go. But whether I was hungry and you gave me to eat. That's it. Thirst you gave me to drink. That's right. Et cetera, et cetera. Huh? Yeah. How can you deal with Jesus when he says, when he says, woe to you rich. Yeah. Or how about the story of the rich man and Lazarus? Yes. Now, is Jesus starting class war? Yes. Or is Jesus saying something to the effect of, our Father God yes. has put here enough for everybody, and greed is bringing tremendous pain and suffering on so many. You've got to stop it if you're going to live the life of God.
So my first, my, my, my first uh, thought in all these things huh, is the fact that, that the church has to first of all begin to take responsibility hmm. for teaching what Jesus taught about recreational wealth. Mm, recreational wealth. <laughs> no one has a right to recreational wealth while other human beings don't have enough to live. That's exactly right. But the church is afraid to do that because it gets so much of its funds from, from people who have that wealth. Yes. So, and, but the consequences are hmm, that that effectively means that, that, that the church is not standing up the way it should be standing up on behalf of the Anawim, and on behalf of those who have nothing. Nothing. In fact, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting that it seems like uh, uh, whichever field you look at, you have to come down to this before you can deal with it. Uh, a recent book uh, uh, that many people have been using the title before that became a title was uh, The Best uh, the best dem Democracy Money Can Buy. And we almost have to face the fact that we have the best uh, Christianity that money, money can, can buy. buy. Beautiful. Uh, Beautiful. Uh, is that... Uh, uh, is that you know, you can't help but think that uh, I, I think of it in terms of, of what happened in the Middle Ages uh, to just take a good deal of all that is good out of the Christian church by its begging for money on one hand and being, uh, shall we say, a garbage collector for the rich on the sure. other. Huh? And uh, uh, I like what you were talking about, uh, 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 the Brazilian saint. Uh, when he finally asked the question, uh, 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 why are these people poor? Hmm? Martin King had something like that, too. Um, Martin was talking about uh, uh, the uh, man who uh, uh, found another man on the road, and he picked him up, a man who was beaten. And he said, in whatever money you need, he told the, uh, the doctors and the people at the inn, whatever money you need, I will give to you as I come back by, right? Now, Martin goes on to talk about how that uh, to help that single man is not the answer. Is that uh, what do we do beyond helping him simply uh, 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 to get well? How do we keep anybody mm -hmm. from being beaten? And he went on to talk about how you straighten the Jericho Road. He went on to talk about how you put lights along the Jericho Road. He talked about how you fence the worst places so that the bandits can't, uh, uh, can't immediately uh, fall upon you. He talked about policing, uh, shall we say, the whole Jericho Road uh, so that, in fact, uh, uh, those that would destroy the people who have a right to be on the Jericho Road uh, will not try it. Uh, is that how do we create a society, in other words, right, that doesn't allow for the poverty, doesn't allow oh, uh, 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 for, for any of these negative things that we know are anti-human, uh, that work so against the human spirit. Uh, ultimately, though, you see, it seems as though that we have to ask ourselves, not simply and that we must ask ourselves about food, clothing, and shelter, we must ask ourselves about education, right? But we must also ask ourselves about the spiritual needs of man and translate these things that are material in one sense, but that are also spiritual in another. And somehow what the institution of the church is not doing or the institution of politics is not doing Right? The institution of education is not doing. We must do mm, That's right. to, to connect all of this to spiritual men. It seems as though that when we talk about 21st century people, right, is that uh, uh, in many ways we have not gone much further than we were a few centuries ago. Uh, uh, I can't help but think of uh, here we had uh, uh, this, we're in a war now, that we simply stepped over generations of human beings attempt to stop war.
all right? Uh, uh, there were such things as uh, you just didn't, you just didn't go in and start attacking somebody you wanted to attack simply because you had a, some excuse for it that you can't prove, didn't necessarily prove, haven't proven yet, right? But uh, and we jumped over even the ideas of a just war, right? What it is, right? Uh, uh, we jumped over. Uh, the whole idea of, uh, of, of nations coming together to decide such things that would happen in the human community. We jumped over it all and just did it. Right? So who, the, per, the people that jumped over it, yeah. because you and I didn't jump. We, yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. Exactly right. But the culture it, did. It is the, 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 the people that jumped are the people that, in fact, control the military, yeah. control, control the economy. That's right. And it seems to me that they also control the media mm -hmm. and therefore brainwash the society right. into that, you know. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned Martin Luther King earlier, and I just want to read a little quote from him. That I, Please, uh, anything from Martin. <laughs> he, says, he says, I have traveled the length and the breadth of Alabama, Mississippi, and all the southern states. I have looked at her beautiful churches with their lofty spires and uh, pointed heavenward. I have beheld the impressive outlay of her massive religious education buildings. Over and over again, I have found myself asking, what kind of people worship here? Who is their God? Yes. Now, what we have here is, we have a world that's a furnace of agony. That's right. Absolute furnace between, you know, between the one person that dies every nine seconds of starvation, the one person every six seconds that dies from a disease they could be inoculated against, mm -hmm. not to mention the two billion that go to bed hungry, hungry every, every night, day. With all that every that night. means in terms of... That's uh, exactly right. You know, and, and the breakdown of the mind and the protein yes. and the body. We, we, we have in our own society. Yes. We have, we, we, we have all the talk and concern about, about predators on children. But can you imagine what's being done to the children of Iraq at this very moment? No. Or Palestine or Israel, what they're That's living right. through? That's exactly Jews, right. Arabs, it must be horrible. These five, four, right. two-year-olds yeah. living in terror and fear and noise and calamity. Yeah, I've seen the, uh, I have seen the, the hunger in, in Africa. It's a horror uh, show. Even, that's exactly right. And, and we don't even talk about it. In fact, in fact, uh, uh, I was, uh, uh, Fourth International Conference on Nonviolence, and I was talking to a fellow there that has since died, a uh, scholar in nonviolence. But uh, I was saying, and you know, the developing countries, and he laughed. And I wondered what he was laughing about, and I said, developing countries. And uh, he, uh, he, and he said, pardon me. And then he said, do you think that if we keep on living like we are, do you think that we're ever going to allow any of those countries to develop? He sure. says, what we're really talking about is the never-to-be-developed countries. Sure. Mm. We're exterminating. Very precisely, because we're slowly killing them by right. allowing uh, to, uh, things to go on, right? We're, we're, we don't want to overcome what we have created, mm? okay. is that if you're in South Africa, you see what's happened because of generations of apartheid. And they simply say, oh, but we've changed the law. There's no longer apartheid. And, uh, but, but the same people still have the wealth. The same people are finally calling the shots because they've got all the goods, all right? That's right. Is that, that, but they don't take responsibility for that because they said we changed the law. The law isn't the issue. The law is the very soul and spirit of these people, right? And when we think of peace, we, we've got to think about the spiritual nature of the society we create, not the legal nature of it per se, right? Is that uh, uh, Martin King had it so right again uh, uh, when he talked about that, that uh, as he wrote from the very beginning on the window of SCLC, to redeem the soul of America, not to save it in the normal terms, but to redeem it, right? Is that uh, uh, until we're, but the newspapers would not allow that to be the thing that we understood about Martin. Uh, they wanted to 
to speak of him as a political being. Well, exclusively. That's exa exclusively. Right. All right. And he was uh, not. That he was not. And nope. was trained uh, at the Ph.D. level. Probably the only Ph.D. in religion in the pulpit in the South, black or white, at that time. Mm -hmm. Right. Thoroughly trained That's for right. it. Nobody could argue with him. That's one of the reasons that he was so profound, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Uh, 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 now, uh, uh, when, in fact, the most famous letter that he wrote was to ministers, Birmingham right? Jail, right? The Birmingham jail. Is that uh, that that understanding that our institutions are not doing the job makes us wonder how God is going to treat you and I. As ministers of the That's gospel, right. huh? How God is going to treat those who profess to be the leaders, and when He looks at their followers, uh, uh, He has to ask questions about us, right? Uh, uh, I can't think of a help but think of uh, uh, Moses. As soon as Moses had gone away, right? Aaron, huh? who had the title but didn't have the content. <laughs> and the people go off and create a golden calf. Right? And you can't help but see this society in the same real way, in the South in particular. In fact, the line that you read mm -hmm. uh, uh, was preceded in Martin uh, uh, by the fact that all around those churches, with all their luxuries, was poverty, racism, destruction, and within them was hate, except the people inside would not use the word, mm -hmm. for those who had little, for those that they had misused for generations, all right? They looked down upon them because to look at them as human beings would be to condemn those people in the church. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, how do we, uh, or what do we do in order to make all of us respect the spiritual nature of every other man, every other woman, every other child, is that it seems to be one of the only answers, uh, I mean, if we could find the how, would be uh, 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 the only real answer, except the brilliance comes in the how in this case. Well, isn't it kind of interesting that it may be, <clears throat> and this is philosophically now, yes. it may be that we're just here by accident. There's no God, there's no nothing, just a random clanking of atoms that produces. Yeah, keep right? talking. But the only other possibility is, yeah. if we're not here by accident, we're here by gift. That's right. Because we didn't bring ourselves out of nothingness. It certainly didn't. God brought us out of nothingness. Yes. So I'm here by gift, you're here by gift, all six and a half billion people are here by gift. Mm -hmm. Now, what can, fine, if we're here by accident, that's one thing. But what can't possibly be? is that if we're here by gift of God, our existence, yes. that my existence is important and yours is junk. Nah. That can't be. That can't be. That it, it, it can't be that I can surround myself in some kind of, 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 uh, of Christian, uh, pastoral, churchy Disneyland, <laughs> And then out here be a global ghetto. Nah, I hear you. Without it's, any relationship whatsoever. It's the same thing to the wealth in the midst of poverty and doing nothing about it. It's exactly the same thing. Now, there's an old saying from way, way back. This is way back in the church, maybe, maybe uh, a thousand years ago. And it has to do with the bishop's hat, the mitre, you yeah. know? And it says, the road to hell is paved with mitres. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning, the preacher, the minister, the bishop, yeah. huh? That, that human beings can't act on ideas they've never heard. That's true. The bishop, the priest, the minister in the pulpit, this is the one that takes on the responsibility for educating conscience. And if he, and if he does not do it, or she does not do it, there's an enormous responsibility. So, so when, the, when the minister in the pulpit, the priest in the pulpit, refuses to point out that those folks out there... <laughs> That they are as valuable as us. Yes. That if they're hurting, that's God wants us to go out there. Jesus tells us to go out there that's again. That's right. When all that's refused to put, and all we do is sing nice songs and that's have right. a feeling like we're dervishes someplace. Yeah. Uh, it seems to me that that we that that we have that we have an issue whereby the educators are not educated. Yes. But serious in terms of this, CT, it is a generational issue. 
because this is not happening in seminaries either. That's true. They are not feeling the urgency and the pressure to go out there into the congregations and to say there are folks out there that you are bound to by being a member of the mystical body, by being a child of God. God. And you cannot leave them there and just go pray. You know, I, I uh, did uh, for one of the major denominations. I don't need to call names, but uh, for one of the major denominations in the South uh, during the period immediately following the '60s, uh, I did the sermon for the morning chapel, and uh, uh, then and it was uh, about these very social issues. And uh, uh, so afterwards, and I visited various classes, and the students said. Uh, we know you're right. They, they would play around with no, right, at first. Right. Yeah. And then they said, we know yeah. you're right, but if we say it, if we try to pastor our churches the way that we know, we will be out the door. <laughs> you bet. And before we even go, the money will stop flowing and people will not be joining our church. And you know what that is? That's a kept minister, just like a kept woman. Ah. Just like if you were to go to Las Vegas and the, and the, and the prostitute union would hire you. Yeah. And they'd say, gee, you can tell us about how bad war is, lying is, stealing is, but don't you dare say a word about lust. Yeah, that's exactly right. And you say, right. okay, as long as you pay me a good salary. Yeah, uh, what kind of ministry is that? that what kind of ministry that's is that? See, uh, 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 you see, here again is one of these... these Issues with every Church of Peace church yeah. hmm? yeah, is that is. Uh, 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 that uh, we who profess, whether we're in pulpit or pew, right, have to be serious about what Jesus was talking about, and the uh, and the pew in our day is not so separate in the basis of such knowledge as we speak of as the. Uh, pulpit because we've had Sunday school, mm -hmm. we've had youth, all kinds of things, right? We've had teaching, uh, we, we have the books, uh, uh, the libraries around. Uh, we is that, so when we even ask the question, we have to say, what percentage of us don't really know? What percentage of us really do know? Mm -hmm. and, and to whom much is expected, uh, much is given, much is expected. Absolutely. That gift Absolutely. you're talking about, you Absolutely. see, is that uh, uh, and, uh, according to what we believe, the gift that we've got is the gift of God, right? That's according right. to what we believe. Yeah. And if we don't act on what we believe, hypocrisy, huh? which uh, the prophets, uh, the 8th century prophets talk about mm -hmm. right, as a hypocrisy and the smell that goes up to the horrible smell that That's goes right. into the nostrils right. of God, right. you see. The stench. Yeah, the stench is the word. Uh, uh, is that uh, uh, how do we free ourselves and wash our souls? Huh? How can we redeem the fact that we were even involved in it. And I think that it's so simplistic in one sense, uh, what I'm trying to say is that we think all we have to do is say, oh Lord, I love you. And we really got the idea that that's going to take care of it. Uh, uh, or, oh Lord, I've been converted. I, you know, our president said something, is that uh, he said he was born again. And one of the reporters asked, well, how do you know you've been born again? And he said, oh, that uh, 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 when you when it happens to you, you will feel it, and you know. Uh, now, uh, a good deal of our religion is at that level. Is that you're supposed to feel something, uh, and that'll take care of it, right? Is that well? Uh, doesn't it do anything to your behavior? Uh, doesn't it, in fact, count for your mm -hmm. actions? Uh, doesn't it have something, doesn't conversion have something to do with uh, uh, the nature of your thought? Um, uh, we act as though that all you have to do, and it comes out of American tradition, of uh, just uh, uh, walk down the aisle. Hmm? The uh, Billy Sunday call it, you know, the, the, the uh, uh, sawdust trail, right? Uh, and that everything's going to be all right. And that somehow God's going to uh, automatically forgive you not only for things, sins of the past, but you don't even have to worry about the future.
And yet, right. our Lord himself says, mm -hmm. it's not those who say, Lord, Lord, yes. but those who do the will of well, the Father. God, that's it. They are, the most used verb by Jesus in the New Testament is do. 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 In fact, you know, my best, my best uh, 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 way of describing Jesus, a short way of describing him, is a, 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 a sentence in the Bible that says, He went about doing good. Huh? Went about doing good. Is that it's in that that we fall short, right? Mm -hmm. Is it in the doing? And this is why. We know that if we, I believe, and I think you believe, and I think that anybody who's really thinking in this culture believes that if the church would really do, with or without, some statement from their denomination, from their church body, right? But if they really did, they would really do the things that they know are right. It would change the very nature of the society. It would renew the face of the earth. Ah, oh, there we go. And no the doubt. earth. Especially if it's the United States, because we have the power and capacity to change the face of the earth. Absolutely. We have the technology, the yes. communications, yes, and everything. Right. The wealth. The wealth to mm. feed, the mind to... Yeah, uh, that's do. it. But the spirit is yeah. not the spirit of Christ moving it. Yeah. And the spirit is necessary to be able to move the rest, is it? The not? spirit of mammon will destroy. Ah, that's exactly right. And the spirit of Christ will save. You know what? The lesson that I learned most, the most important lesson I learned from the Civil Rights Movement was this, is that we cannot be the people that we desire to be until radical, radical love overcomes radical evil. And that there's no passive in between. And that mainly what is wrong is that we're passive. It's not even that we don't know. We don't want to act as even we know. It's a, uh, uh, we, we become passive in the face of the evil. But there's a whole lot of people that just don't know what to do. That's right. So they want to hold on to uh, cheap religion, cultural religion, simply because they don't know what to do. But they find no one to tell them. That's right. right. That's right. I, and I think that's where our new technology comes in. But what bothers me is that 90% of the stuff that I see on the airwaves, right, is uh, uh, not as good as most of the stuff we get in a good church, mm -hmm. and, and uh, that we have no the theologi we have no theologians weekly on TV. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of preachers. Preachers. Huh? Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of devotional material, but we don't have the other. The depth isn't there. That's right. Some last word from you, my friend. Literate people come to and sustain faith differently than illiterate people to carry mm, from the last going, point. Keep going. There must be an intelligent presentation of the gospel mm -hmm. made to folks in terms of what we know from scripture scholarship, what we know from what the words say in Greek and Hebrew. We know what they mean. Good. And they don't mean doing nothing. Ah, they thank mean you. doing something for peace. Ah, good. Thank you. Uh, every church a peace church. And uh, the Father Emmanuel Charlie McCarthy. And remember what his book is, A Cry, what his ministry is, a cry to the churches and their leaders to stop running from the nonviolent Jesus and his nonviolent way.